In the workshop, a Cotswold Heritage Atlas steam plant, part 4, mounting the components on the baseboard. In this clip, I'm temporarily fitting a piece of masking tape onto the engine's plinth, so I can find out the position where I need to drill the mounting holes in the base so that they line up with the bearers. There's a well-known old saying that says, measure twice and cut once. But in this case, I'm measuring several times before I drill any holes in the baseboard. Because this is quite a large model steam engine, it needs to be fitted exactly in the middle of the baseboard. And after making many minor adjustments, I finally arrive at the measurements that I need so that I can mount the engine exactly in the centre of the baseboard. I'm doing this as always in real time. You've actually seen me as I do the job. I'm not staging it for the video. And as you can also see here, I'm tapping the engine gently into the correct position. I'm taking the measurements from the front left hand side, the front right hand side, and the side rear and the side front. And once the engine is perfectly in position, I stick some masking tape to the baseboard so that when I lift the engine off the baseboard, you can see where it's going to go. This is not a good job for anyone of a nervous disposition, because making a mess of this baseboard would not be a good thing. And the next part of the job is to stick some more masking tape on the baseboard and stick it inboard of the original masking tape. And if you remember, in the opening sequence, I stuck some masking tape on the engine to find out where I would need to mark the masking tape to locate the positions of the mounting bars inside the plinth. It is surprisingly easy to make a mess of this job, and as you can see, I put the marks in the wrong place initially at the top of the picture, so I scrubbed them out and then put them in the correct place. So now it's reality time. I'm drilling the holes in the base, and if these are in the wrong place, then I'm going to have to order a new base. The next part of the job is to remove the masking tape, but not all of it. I'll leave the outer masking tape in position, so know where to put the engine. I'm drilling through from the other side using a 7 30 seconds of an inch drill bit. This is a very good clearance size for the metric screws that I'm going to use to fasten the plinth to the baseboard. You can see one of the screws at the bottom of the picture. With the baseboard overhanging the bench and the engine in position, using the same 7 30 seconds of an inch diameter drill bit, I drill some very shallow indentations in the wooden mounting blocks on the plinth itself. The next part of the job is to use a 1 8 of an inch twist drill and drill some pilot holes so that when I screw the screws into position, they're not going to split the wood. For the next part of the job, I pull the baseboard over the end of the bench and using my electric screwdriver, I screw the first of the screws into place. Here you can see the type of wood screws that I'm using. These special modern wood screws can drill their own holes into the wood that they're being screwed into, but I thought I would drill pilot holes, because I really do not want to take the risk of splitting the bearers in the plinth. Once I'd screwed the engine's plinth to the baseboard with the first two screws, I lifted the baseboard complete with the engine into a vertical position so I could drill the other two screw holes. All I have to do now is remove the masking tape. Most of it came away cleanly apart from this bit that tore. But on a second attempt it removed OK. The final two pieces of masking tape came away quite easily. Although I didn't show it in the video, I initially used a small countersink to countersink the holes underneath the baseboard. But I didn't make the countersinks deep enough so in this clip, I'm rectifying that problem by countersinking the holes a little bit deeper, making sure that all the heads of these screws are below the level of the wood. Although it's a bit after the race, I'm just double-checking my measurements, because if the engine is in the wrong position, I can correct it slightly by enlarging the holes, but that's a bodge, and I'm not going to do that. I took my time, measured everything twice, and as I used the masking tape method, the engine is perfectly in the centre of the baseboard. Time now to find the best position for the boiler. I need it to sit midway between the plinth and the edge of the baseboard. Most of this I did by eye with the help of a small RDG tools ruler. With the gunmetal ring in position, I'm just drilling some mounting holes into the baseboard, after which I simply screw the ring to the board using some countersunk screws. The boiler's cast iron base is a push fit into the ring. I'm using a piece of wood to make sure that it sits nice and level in the ring itself. In this clip, before painting it, I'm scratching the surface of the copper water tank with some emery cloth. 
and then it's into the outer part of the workshop when I paint it first of all using etching primer. This etching primer or etch primer is precision paints etch primer which I do find to be very good stuff to use. I'm following the instructions to the letter. I'm only giving this copper a thin coat because the instructions that come with the etch primer say give the copper a thin coat so you can still see the metal underneath then leave it to dry for 24 hours before overcoating. So once again, here's the paint drying. While that's happening, I'm going to take the camera back into the main part of the workshop to have a look at the installation. The water tank will fit just to the left of the engine at the back, and you will notice that I put a gas tank in the picture as well. I have some plans for this that I will show you in a later episode, but that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.